Hello everyone. Welcome to Lisa's Stamp Studio. I'm Lisa Curcio and this is tonight's Facebook Live. I am so glad you joined me. Got a super cute project that I'm going to be sharing with you tonight. It's a 3D project. You don't see too many of those from me, but boy, I'll tell you what, I do enjoy them. For those of you that don't already have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator and would like copies of the current catalogs, I would be happy to send them to you. So please leave me a comment here and I'll be happy to get in touch with you and get your address from you. I think we've already talked about how the new catalog is going to be coming out in June 1st. And one of the products I'm going to be using with you tonight is actually going to be carried over into the new catalog. The product that I am talking about tonight are these. You may not have even noticed these. These are the mini silver gable boxes. And those are right here on page 13 of the Occasions catalog. Here they are. We're going to be using not only these mini silver gable boxes, but we're also going to be using this Sweet Soray um, embellishment kit and I'm really excited to share with you some really cool ideas with this including this what they're calling shreddy. I'm gonna pull out one of the boxes from the package. These are a great deal. You get 12 of them in the pack and they're only $8. So you all know how this goes. They're already pre-cut, pre-scored, ready for you to make this really, really cute gable box. But you know, I thought that's too predictable. Those of you that have followed me on Facebook before or on YouTube or my blog, I like to work outside the normal. So guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna take this box apart. So I'm gonna open this up right here along the seam. And I'm gonna just be careful. I'm not gonna overly worry about too much that it's not perfect. And then I'm gonna take off any little extra paper here that may have gotten in the way. And I'm gonna open up that box. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring in my Big Shots. I'm a big fan of my magnetic platform when I'm, or I'm going to use framelits. And that's what I'm gonna be using tonight. I've pulled out a couple of the ovals. And these come from the Layering Ovals Framelits set. I have to tell you, the circles, the ovals, and the squares are among my favorites simply because it is such a huge package of framelits. Not only are there nesting sizes from small to large, but guess what? You also get the scallop shapes as well. And that is indicative of both the ovals, the circles, and the squares, which makes these an immense buy. And hey, you know what? I don't know about you, but I'm a girl who loves storage solutions. So I absolutely love the little plastic labeled little envelope that these get to be stored in. It's just another great way to store your things. But because of the metal framelits, I like to use the magnetic platform. I've had people ask me, Lisa, do we have to use this? Absolutely not, it's not required. You can of course go ahead and use your regular platform with the thin die adapter. I'm just a fan of this, so you'll see me using it. You're gonna to wanna to put a clear cutting mat on the bottom to protect it. And I've pulled out a piece here of designer series paper, and this is from that Sweet Soiree designer series paper pack. And I'm gonna show you right down here at the bottom. The patterns in here are absolutely beautiful. This paper is not being carried over into the new catalog. So you're gonna to wanna to make sure you grab it in my online store before it's depleted. Remember that accessories, these are things that are consumable, are only while supplies last or May 31st, whichever comes first. Like I just said, these little mini silver gable boxes are being carried over. I'm gonna go ahead and lay my scallop one right on top of here. And I'm not really concerned about where I'm die cutting this. The one thing about this specific designer series paper is there's a graduation of the beautiful silver foil dots that are on the paper. So I'm just gonna nest these two together. And I'm gonna to look to try to get them as even as I possibly can, one inside the other. And my trick and my tip for you is a post-it note. I don't know about you, but how many times you've actually placed your dies on top of your platform, and then you go to cover them up with that other clear mat and they tend to shift. Grab yourself a post-it note and make life easy. So I'm gonna take those right down across there to hold them in place. I'm putting that other clear mat over the top, and then I'm gonna crank this through. I'm going to slide my Big Shot over so you can see it coming out the other end as well. And here we go. I'm going to take off that post-it note. And I'll just disassemble this. And you're going to see that this is going to leave us this really, really cute 
little oval like bordered ring. So I'm gonna set that aside, but we're gonna use the Big Shot one more time. And I'm gonna move this over and slide that back through. This is called the lazy way to use your Big Shot. I don't pick up the platform, I just slide. Another tip for you. Remember this box that I just opened up? I'm gonna make an opening on this box. See that little tab here? I'm making sure that's on the left. So I'm gonna start over here on the right and I'm using the smallest of those ovals. This was the one on the inside of that little frame that we just created here. And I'm gonna lay that here on the front of that little foil box. I'm looking at the top and the bottom to try to get as about equal space, as good as I can. And then I'm gonna use that post-it note one more time right across the front to hold that in place. And then I'm gonna put this right over the top. I wanna to make sure that my box is gonna clear my Big Shot platform, okay? You wanna make sure it doesn't get crunched as it's going in. And I'm gonna crank it through again. So I'm just gonna shift that a little bit for you. And I'm going to crank. All right, I'm gonna slide that over so you guys can see. I'm gonna remove that cutting mat. I'm gonna take off that post-it note. And I'm gonna pop this out. So now I've got a hole in the front of my box. I'm gonna bring in my silicone craft sheet because I'm gonna be doing a little bit of adhesive. What we're gonna actually be doing is we're gonna be placing adhesive on the inside of the perimeter of this area so that we can attach a window here. I'm gonna lay this here for you and then it's nothing fancy. I'm gonna go right around the little oval with my snail adhesive and just place a little adhesive in its place. I am going to place the window sheet right over that. The one thing I did learn is you wanna make sure that you don't go too crazy with the adhesive, that it's gonna come out the perimeter of that window sheet because otherwise it's gonna be sticky on the inside of the box. So you're gonna actually go around here. So we've got our little window. I'm actually gonna continue working on the front while it's still flat. And I'm gonna remove that black piece of cardstock because I think you can see me pretty good now. And remember that frame that we just made? Well, I'm gonna actually adhere that to the front. Now, I've tried lots of ways, and you probably have your own tactics, and none of them are wrong. But I found for me, rather than using adhesive, I actually used my multi-purpose liquid glue, and these are just wedges of stamping sponges. And I actually put a binder clip on them to keep my fingers clean, makes them a lot easier to use. I keep them in an airtight container so that these don't become dry and brittle and of course then we'll be ripping your project instead of applying the glue. So I'm gonna flip this over and I'm gonna work down here. The silicone craft sheet is my best friend because even as this glue dries, it will not stick to here. I'll be able to literally wipe it off. So I'm gonna take that sponge I'm gonna kind of dissipate that glue just a little bit so it's a real thin palette. And I'm gonna tap that here on the back. I'm trying to be careful that I don't get glue on the other side. The one thing about liquid glue, I don't know if you guys have noticed this or not, but I'm gonna bet that you have. It doesn't dry completely clear, but it's super duper strong and it gives you a little bit of wiggle room. So here I am gonna go right around that window lining it up the very best that I can. And then I'm gonna come across here and I'm just gonna rub. So guess where this is going? Right back inside my little Rubbermaid container here. And I'm gonna make sure that that's airtight so I can use those sponges again on another project. So I'm gonna use tear and tape because I wanna make sure that my 3D project is not gonna fall apart. Oh, and remember this? This can now just rub right off your silicone craft sheet. You don't have to worry about fighting a sticky surface like you would on top of your scratch paper or your grid paper if you're using that. One time buy worth its weight in gold and I will tell you it's on my stamp table every single day when I'm stamping. I've got my tear and tape here. So I'm gonna line that up here on the edge. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull off one layer of that tape. Do you see how I'm burnishing the paper into this project? That's gonna make sure that when I go to lift it, I'm actually only gonna get the paper backing that comes off and not the tape itself. And then I'm gonna do one more row. This is kind of a little bit wider than the actual tape itself. So I wanna make sure I've got enough adhesive on there. Again, we don't want that embarrassment of our 3D project falling apart. I always say that the spring months, like May, June, and even July are wedding months. It seem to be really popular with a lot of brides and these would make beautiful favors either at the shower or at the wedding. 
Just think of baptisms with the beautiful silver, anniversary parties, graduations, birthday parties. Little 3D project ideas are fantastic. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna lay this flat and I'm just gonna close it. A lot of people try to do this and put it all together in the air and boy, is that challenging. So keep your project flat on your work surface. This tip even works when you're constructing your own boxes and 3D projects. If you've done the scoring correctly, then you should be able to lay it flat and then just press. I think it's gonna be ugly tab first and then little tabs, they're gonna pop in and then this is gonna go in. I always tell myself ugly tab first and that never fails. It always seems to remind me of how it goes. And do you see the interlocking here? The great thing is, is the construction is strong enough for you to put a small gift inside of here or of course food or little favors. Let's go ahead and just close up the gable. All the score lines are already there for you. So this comes down and I'm gonna kind of pinch this. The little notches here on the side, I'm just gonna poke those out. And that's gonna close up this side here. Look at that, isn't that slick? I love that. And then we're gonna do one more here. Here comes the fun part, let's decorate. I'm gonna be using the Sweet Soray Embellishment Kit. They were on back order because that's how furiously popular they have been, but good news, they're back in stock. And because they are a retiring product, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get your hands on these right away. Let me open up and let's show you a little bit about what's inside. Now, let's keep in mind too that I've used some of this already. I love the really nice clear acetate box for storage. We've got these little cute white clothespins. I'm gonna take one of those out. We're gonna use one of those. There's adorable tassels. Make sure you stick with me. I've got another one to show you when we're all done. And there's this beautiful scalloped velvet ribbon. If you follow my blog, you'll see that I made a sympathy card using this. This is just really, really pretty stuff. Glue dots are gonna be your best friend for that product. There's also this really pretty silver foil washi tape that's included with this embellishment kit, but no work. So this means you can make a bunch of these effortlessly. This is even something the kids can probably do with you. So I'm gonna pop out one of the larger roses that are here. And you're also gonna see that there's these beautiful vellum pieces. So I'm gonna take out one of those and these are silver embossed in the paper already for you. I'm gonna lay one of those there. And there's some of these ferns. Let's take one of those. They're already die cut, so all you have to do is just pop them out. What looks good? Let's take this one. The great thing is it, there's an endless amount of possibilities. This also comes with a couple cake dies that are inside here. Already colored, foil embossed, really pretty for you. And look at this. When's the last time you've actually seen numbers? Yes, again, already die cut. Just pop them out, add a little bit of glue, just like I showed you with the liquid glue and the sponge, and add those to your projects. This way you can have a customized gift. So maybe someone celebrating a 50th wedding anniversary, or maybe a 25 birthday party, or a quince. This is a great way to add some customization to your box. Let me set those pieces aside, and let's work with these. I'm gonna start by using my glue dots. So I'm gonna take one of my smaller ones and I'm gonna press that in place right on top and it's gonna lift the glue dot off. And I'm gonna look for some positioning here. The great thing about a 3D project, unlike a card, is that it doesn't really matter if it hangs outside the perimeter. So I've got another one here, I'm gonna fold that back. I'm gonna take this longer fern, isn't this pretty? I'm gonna come across here at the bottom and tack that in place. And then remember this larger one? We can kind of manipulate this and decide how we want this to go. And I think I want it this way. So I'm actually gonna use a dimensional this time. Again, another huge, wonderful aspect of 3D projects is the amount of dimension that you can create that you necessarily can't do on a card because you gotta get it in an envelope. And of course, there's always that postage issue. Stick that right on here. And that dimensional that you see, it's gonna be virtually invisible in just a second. So I'm gonna take a couple more dimensionals here. This is that little rose that I popped out from the embellishment kit. And then I'm gonna put this right here. Gonna hide that dimensional, but I wanna make sure that I don't hide all that beautiful vellum that's there. Got a piece of Whisper White cardstock. 
and I'm gonna actually use the Calypso Coral ink pad. You know, when I looked at this, I was like, well, that sure doesn't look like Calypso Coral, but I was stunned at how beautiful it coordinates. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my ink pad, and I've pulled out the greeting that says, hope your day is as wonderful as you are. And this comes from the stamp set called A Mother's Flare. You saw me use this with the narrow note cards and the box. I am loving this and I'm so sad it's being retired. <laughs> I have found this to be extremely versatile. The other great thing is solid images and greetings all mixed together. And there is a Mother's Day greeting in here, but there's so many other varied greetings as well. So for those of you that don't like to color or who like to make really quick projects, this is a great stamp set for you. Again, on the retired list, so you're gonna wanna make sure that you grab your set before it's gone. So I'm gonna ink that up in my Calypso Coral. Just a little tip, I always like to look on the back and make sure I don't have ink around those edges because sure enough, if you do, you've got that really nice line silhouette all the way around. I'm gonna use some circle punches. I've got the one and one half inch circle punch and I'm gonna come up underneath here. I'm gonna switch over now to the one and three quarter inch circle punch and I've got an extra piece of designer series paper. That's the same one that we used here. And I'm gonna punch this one out just a little bit bigger. And here comes that silicone craft sheet again. Boy, I absolutely love this thing. And I'm gonna add some adhesive to the back. I'm gonna actually mount that right here, leaving a little bit of frame all the way around. Ahead of the video, I did this. I made a multi-loop bow. And I know some of you are gonna ask me, oh my gosh, how did you do that? Okay, well, this is a paper crafting cheat secret. It's a bow maker. And mine was actually made for me by a friend and given to me as a gift. But you can find bow makers just about everywhere for these multi-loop bows. But let me show you how I'm gonna put this together to give this the absolute most adorable presentation. I'm gonna add a glue dot here to the top of that little tag that we made out of circles. So I'm gonna add a couple glue dots here because my bow is a good size. Of my greeting and then guess what remember this little tiny clothespin let's just show you one other little step here we talked about the shred and the one thing about these gable boxes is that they can be opened and closed which means you can make them ahead of time for an event and then you can still then open them up the day of the event to fill them with whatever you want so there's a shred inside this series of products and you're gonna see it here it's called the Sweet Soray Ready Shreddy. Isn't that catchy? You're going to get for $7.50. Are you ready? Look at the size of this. You're going to get silver. You're going to get white. And you're going to get the beautiful berry burst. You get all three of these for $7.50. And just to give you an idea of my hand, look how big this is. So this is a great deal. This, of course, is retiring as well. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit out. And I don't know about you guys, but do you have trouble taming this stuff too when you get it out of the bag? I know I do. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that. Now, let's just pretend that maybe we've added some beautifully handmade and wrapped chocolates. Or perhaps it's um, a small gift. And I'm going to go ahead and close up my little gable box again on those little notches. And just like we did before... But I've got one more to show you that I made ahead of time. And look at, same exact concept to the one I just shared with you here, but look at this. Another multi-loop bow. I did not use the little clothespin on this one, but I used the tassels. I used one of the beautiful Marina Mist. And this is a piece of designer series paper. So let me walk you through how I did this. I actually cut this a little bit smaller than this area right here. Don't make yourself crazy measuring everything and trying to make it perfect. Because the box itself is so beautiful, you can leave a little bit of a ledge here so that the actual box shows through. So all I did was wrap the designer paper around here with a little bit of adhesive. I used the other colored little punch pieces that are inside this kit. I added them the exact same way. Instead of doing that designer paper here, I used the silver foil sheets. And look at this. See the metal rimmed pearls, aren't these pretty? And they're retiring. I would love to know which one you like. Yeah, these are lots of fun, you know, and how easy, right? But I wanted to show you how you could make that window to kind of dress up this box even further than just the beautiful plain box that it is itself. 
I also want to talk to you a little bit about my rewards program. It's exclusive and it's incredibly generous. The $25 product order automatic gets you into a live Facebook event in a private group called Live with Lisa. There I do several product demonstrations and projects with you. I provide you with a huge bundle of tutorials, seven or eight every single month. In addition to that, your name's gonna be put into what I call Product Prize Patrol. And there I give away product prizes while we're on the live. Now, if you can't make the Facebook Live, there's no worry because it is recorded. If you choose to place a $50 product order before shipping and tax, you get all that, you're gonna get what I call my gift list. So I have what I call a VIP gift list for those that have a $50 product order or greater. You're gonna get a whole list of things that you can choose from, and you'll choose one item from that list absolutely free via email. And then I order it and I send it to you. It's just my way of saying thank you for your business. And make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. When you subscribe and you're on a desktop computer, a little bell icon should be next to that subscribe button. If you click on that, it's going to give you notifications about when I've posted a new video to YouTube, as well as when I'm going to be live so that you don't miss out. Oh yes, thank you, Megan, my newsletter. I offer a free weekly e-newsletter, completely free, but guess what? There's an extra tutorial in there that is not shared on any of my other platforms. All you have to do is go over to my blog and sign up for it. You'll find the details and the right margin, or if you scroll down, it'll pop right up. Thanks so much, everyone, for being here, and I look forward to seeing you again soon for another great project. You guys have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.